I'm going to turn my notifications off because I forgot to. So we don't get the bzz bzz. Whew. How's everybody doing? Witzel's here. Waldrip's here. Waldrip's just talking to himself before Witzel got here. Almost, almost banned Paul. Well, that's super empty. That's not good. I guess you're not doing red much. Oh, make a painting. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna. It's kind of a painting. We're making art. We'll play with some color. It feels like that's what. That's what I need right now is bright and colorful. It has been gray and dreary and <clears throat> for a long time here. And so we get the, the spring starts to seep through and you start thinking, okay, maybe it's spring now. And then it starts hailing and snowing again. And, just, and it goes gray and blustery and windy and gross again. And you're like, <laughs> You know, paint some friendly little trees, some happy little trees. No, I, I, it's not going to be a, that's not the kind of painting that I do. I have done, I have done that kind of painting, like landscapey painting. Um, I've done lots of different kinds of painting, but these days it's more just smashing the colors around. This, uh, this particular, well, I'm working, I'm doing two pieces right now. One we're going to do tonight and the, another similar one, I'm doing a specific color scheme. Uh, and they will end up being kind of like this guy over here. So it's like, it's painting, but it's also some woodworking and it's also some, uh, it's, it's a landscape, it's a mountainscape. It's an abstracted mountainscape using wood. And acrylic paint. But it's certainly not like, okay, let's put in a bush and like put in a little lake and stuff. I'm not gonna, not gonna paint a happy little tree. My hair is on the wrong side of my head for that. If my hair was on the other side of my head, maybe I would paint happy little trees. <laughs> that is not what I'm doing. Because my hair is on the other side of my head. What's everybody else up to? I probably could chimp in a zoo sling poo and see where it lands. Well, I mean, you might look at it that way, but uh, it's controlled poo flinging. Different colors of poo to create tones and effects and moods. It's not just willy nilly. It'll look willy nilly when I do it. <laughs> Joel's making benches. He ever not make benches? <laughs> Spent the day doing guitar stuff in the shop. As per usual. Beer's empty. Have I ever said, have I ever said beer? Like four minutes, 30 seconds into the show? Beer. All right, I'm gonna do some painting. It's not gonna take very long though, so most of the show is just gonna be sitting here. 
But we'll get some color on this bad boy, get it starting to dry so that I can then cut the wood to make the mountains out of um, over the next couple of days. Like I said, I'm making two. One of them is for uh, an auction for children's programs here in Campbell River. Uh, it's a program called Kid Start that is basically, if you know Big Brothers and Big Sisters, it's basically that uh, under a different name. So one of them is going to be auctioned off for that. Uh, and the other one I don't have a plan for yet. I'll probably just put it up in the collective and have it for sale. I'm actually looking at possibly doing a course, uh, a class on this process uh, this summer at the, the Arts Collective where we do a bunch of classes and workshops and things like abstract wooden mountains. Sort of a, I bring in, I'll pre-make the panels and pre-cut all of the wood and whatever and we'll make something together as a class and People can pick what colors they use and what size mountains they want and the direction of flow of things. And we'll talk about composition and and color theory and stuff like that. And people can make one of these for themselves. You have your eye on a Stanley 55. Go get it. <laughs> I don't have a 55. I don't need a 55. I don't. If, if I stumble upon one for the right price, I can't say I wouldn't buy it. Because <laughs> I do that with planes. But I'm not going to go looking for a 55. Kaplaz here. This is on for some reason. I, oh, it got, got cold here. I was out here late. Oh, and I wanted things to cure properly. I was priming and... Gluing panels and then priming panels and stuff, so it needed to get the garage temperature up a little bit. It's like, why is it hot? Because I was working at night. Eric Habakabaka is here. All right, we got, we got some people trickling in. Uh, like I said last week, this is going to be the last show of April, because next week we've got the thing going on at work that I have to be at, which is where this painting is going to get auctioned off. Um, and so I'll be there from the time that I'm off work until three hours after that. So it'll be too late to do a show after that. So maybe, maybe we'll just bump it and do it on Monday next. What was that? 29.30? 30 days has you nope this is the last show for april because even if i bump it to monday it'll be me <laughs> but no guarantees i've done like 20 21 or 22 shows in the 16 or 17 weeks that this year has had in it I could take a I could take a week off. I I would be comfortable with that. I finally got my dust collector working. Bought it about a year ago. Hey. Yay. My dust collector has always worked. I just had it doesn't been hooked up to anything. <laughs> so it doesn't really it hasn't worked really in terms of collecting dust from machines. But it's always worked. If I flick the switch, it turns on and sucks. How would you survive without that negative cash flow from YouTube? Well, it'll be tough. I'll, uh, I'll have to go back to mac and cheese and uh, ramen noodles for a week. But Yeah, sometimes we got to make sacrifices. I've never made negative money from YouTube. Uh, well, depends on your definition, I guess. <laughs> sometimes it has cost me more to make a video than I made from it. But I've never made a video on a 
I've never made anything just to be making a video of making that thing or whatever. So that's not really making, like, certainly I've never, I have not made enough money to cover the cost of most of the projects that I've made, that's for damn sure, but. It was week, week, week 16 for the year. Okay, and I'm pretty sure that this is like my 21st show this year, so. I, yeah, I'm not going to feel bad if I take a week off. But I'll probably miss you, boneheads, and I'll be like, let's do a show Monday. <laughs> no guarantees. I have to start the OnlyFans up. I don't need another platform. I cannot, I can't produce enough various forms of content for the various platforms that I'm already on. That's why, that's why I've like peaked on, on YouTube because I can't. I can't keep up with all of the other crap that you have to do to, in order to get people over to your YouTube channel. All the Instagram and TikToks, Facebooks, and the Discords, and Reddits, and all of the blah, 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 blah. I can't, I can't keep up. I can't dedicate enough of my life to content creation. <laughs> Doom. <laughs> Is that a social media platform? I don't know. Yeah, it's, a, it's just LinkedIn. TikTok. TikTok. TikTok is the big one, apparently. It's it, like billions of people on that shit. And I'm like, no, I don't have any interest in that at all. But, business Mike really should be where the people are. I don't wanna. I don't wanna be where the people are. I wanna be by myself in the shop. Everybody can go where they want to go, find the people they want to find. It's all good. Look at that. I don't know. We'll get to painting eventually. It's fine. I promise. It's right here. It's all... That's the back side of the easel all set up. I got my brushes over here. Got my, all my paints over here. I'm I'm ready to go. I just don't feel like it yet. <laughs> uh, who else did I see, Mayor? Who else did I see that hasn't said what they're making? Stanifer, what are you making these days, my friend? Eric Habakabaka, are you making anything? Dr. Ping. I don't even know that I know what Dr. Ping actually makes. Do you make things or are you just like watching other people make things or watch you like listening to people talk about making things or because whatever you're welcome but Stanford's turning some bowls and a few pans okay working over on the lathe right on Should probably, really, so it sounds terrible, but I probably should get starting geared up for summer markets. Start building inventory so that it's not like the last couple weeks like it is most of the time to just crush out stuff. 
Now one's back. They're working on a small treasure chest. A novelty treasure chest. Okay, cool. Kaplaw's working on a box with 30 staves and a lid. Hey, sweet. Stave box. Right on. Eric Habakabaka is trying to build out uh, an outdoor bar for the Bali Hut. Bali Hut sounds fun. Outdoor bar sounds fun. Trying to doesn't sound fun. Sounds like maybe there's some problems. <laughs> I never, would never start a sentence with, I'm trying to do this, if, the, if it was going smoothly. <laughs> Is it not going smoothly, <laughs> Eric? The connotation of, I've tr of I'm trying to blah, 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 is not great. <laughs> Box will be four to six inches high. I haven't decided yet. With, with 30 staves around that, that's like, that's cool. That's a cool project. Decisions on wood type. Oh, the outdoor Bali hut bar. I'm going to go with Mari. And style. Well, style I can't really help you with. That's, that's kind of a personal preference thing. But by my understanding, Mari is... A relatively hard wearing outdoor good a good outdoor wood that is plentiful and relatively inexpensive in Australia. I think. I could be wrong. I'm not I mean, I'm not in Australia. And I might not be remembering things properly. My barbarian does log things though, like pretty well. Pretty effectively. Isn't Mari what you, what you guys make all your, like, telephone posts and shit out of? Like, it's, it's a pretty common outdoor wood down there, is it not? Stand for I'm not good with joints either. Dovetail is not my friend. <laughs> Doing it anyhow. Can't become good without practice. Yeah! Fuck. If the dovetails stick together and they hold things from shimmying around, it's a good dovetail. Whatever. Who cares if it's got little gaps and stuff in it? Depending on what the project is, I guess, but. You gotta. And I cut so few dovetails that every time I do it, I have to remember the process and then remember which side of lines I need to be cutting on and things. And it's like, I just don't get the muscle memory for it. And if I did it more often, I would, I would be better at it. Turned a lignum vitae pen yesterday. It broke my carbide tip, so I had to get a new one. Oh! The 20-year-old carbide tip that has been sharpened a dozen times or more has bit the dust because of lignum vitae. Got to get my own YouTube channel up and running so I can show some stuff. Yeah, that's... It's an option. I... <laughs> I have trouble telling people to do this, honestly. I don't, it's not that I don't enjoy it. <laughs> but man, if anybody ever said, if, if the question ever was like, should I start a YouTube channel? And I was like, just it, should I start a YouTube channel? Question mark. My answer would probably be no. My shot for we have lap joints. Sweet. Mate has a burl in red Mally. I've got a bunch of red Mally burl pen blanks. This is one of my favorite pen that I've ever turned probably was a red Mally burl pen. He wants you to use for the outdoor tiki hut or whatever it is. Well, you... You don't want to use the burl for like structural pieces, maybe like decorative inlays or something.
that's too pretty to use. Like, a, it's too pretty to use for structural pieces, and B, it's not stable enough for structural pieces. Burl is the, the grain is later. That's what makes it burl is the grain is all like being this. It's not really strong. Wouldn't want, I wouldn't do it to make money or monetize it in any way. I just want to have a hobby to have fun with. Yeah, I get it. I don't do this to make money either. But. Hmm. I almost said if I had to do it over again, I would just keep making stuff in my shop and, and for myself and put pictures up online and stuff to share it and not make videos. It. But I, I wouldn't, because then I wouldn't have met all you guys. We wouldn't be doing this every week. And it, I, I would, I like that that is a thing that it's become. But it, it does suck some of the love of the making out of it when you have to constantly be worried about framing and just uh, this not. It's hard to get into a flow, like when you're when you're really in a when you're really, really in a project and things are coming like next thing, next thing, next thing. And you don't even have to think because you know what the next thing is. And you can go from one to one to one to one and work your way through a project because things are just working. Now take that. And in between every one of those things that you do, you have to stop and you have to take this thing and reset it up in a different place and a different orientation and press go. And then do your thing and then come back to it and press stop. And that doesn't sound like a huge pain in the ass, but it really, it really pulls you out of where you, where you would optimally be in your head, in your head space. I don't want, I'm not going to discourage anybody from making a YouTube channel. But just there, there are down, there are downsides. <laughs> that buddy that started doing a YouTube channel two years ago just does tool reviews. That's all. He's never made anything. He's just reviewing tools. Why? How could you possibly trust a tool review by a guy you've never seen make something? But whatever. Uh, can't keep up with the free tools he gets. <laughs> That's the kind of shit that makes me want to throw up in my mouth. Makes most of his money by selling the demo tools. <laughs> sure. Hey. You know. Oh, Pinnell. 23 minutes late. <laughs> I've never been sent a free tool. I've been offered um I've been offered free tools. But I looked at the tools that I was offered and was like I don't want these. <laughs> even for free I don't want these and I don't want to pretend like I like them because I got them for free I wouldn't that would be the deal that I would make with them it's like okay I'll do I'll take them and I'll use them but if they suck I'm gonna tell people but I don't want to do that either. Like, I don't want to be like, yeah, I got all these free tools. They're garbage. Don't buy those. Like, I don't want any of that. Huh? Beer. And then, uh, then we'll slap some color on this bad boy. I do have, 
I do have, for anybody interested, I do have a project video on my channel of making your own panels to paint on. Way cheaper than you're going to be able to buy them for. Um, and that will hopefully go quickly in this the project video that I'm doing on these paintings. Because it, I've already got a video of doing that, so hopefully I can race through the part where I make the panel and get to the making of the art. And uh, it's set to be the video of this artwork is set to be released in March 2026. Because that's about the pace that I release videos on these days. <coughs> My YouTube was stuck on the waitlist screen for 15 minutes. It feels, it looks like you've been on for 10 minutes. I've been on for 26 minutes and 7 seconds. Can tell because I've got a timer that's going. And there are 10 people here and only six of you have hit the thumbs up button. It's bad friending. What the hell? Sorry man, I don't know what to tell you. And I even made a I even made a post on Patreon today that said like yes there's a show. See you at 5:45. And usually, like, yes, I'm I'm often late, but I'm never 26 or 24 minutes late or whatever. Like, if I'm 24 minutes late, I'm probably not doing the show. Like, usually it's, I set it for 5.45 and it's like 5.48, 5.50 would be pushing it. fine you made it eventually you found your way in there was they're like what are you gonna miss really it's just nonsense we're just we're just hanging out I'm waiting to see if you like the show or not I guess it's fair that's that's fair the show might be garbage so why would you click the like button it's a valid point And you, you're the worst, so like you don't want to, you don't want to upset the natural balance of things by not being the worst. <laughs> I'm thinking some crimson red. Some purple. Some turquoise. And some yellow? Orange? Orange. Well, how much orange do I have? I only have one jar of orange. I hope it's got some in it. Yeah, there's some in there. These guys and some white. I like that. Nice and warm. Because the other one that I'm doing, like I said, I'm doing... Oh, hey! Paul, thanks very much, my friend. He's, he sends me stuff in the mail. He sends me money. That's a that's good friending right there. Some of you guys don't even hit the thumb button, and he just like sends me stuff and sends me money. <laughs> Boo, everybody else. <laughs> uh, that's funny. I like that. That's pretty warm with just a touch of cool. Just to in some accent areas and some white to lighten them up i don't have a lot of white either i'm actually gonna have to get some new white before i start in on the second one 
Paul's a tough act to follow. Yeah, he's leading by example. This show brought to you by Waldrop Guitars. I'd be happy to send you some wood from Florida if you pay for postage. <laughs> See, that's what... No. I don't even like paying postage on my own stuff that I'm sending to other people that they're paying for. And sometimes they're not paying enough for it, and that's why I don't like paying it, because it's coming out of my pocket. But that's because Business Mike is terrible at this. I mean, hell, maybe if I had some stuff on my Etsy store that people could buy. There's another, that's another platform that I just don't have enough time to actually manage properly. I have personal assistant that I would have to, it's a catch 22 though. I don't make enough money to hire somebody to help me optimize things and make me money. But if I had that person to optimize things and make me money, I would have enough money to pay for them. <laughs> <coughs> have you seen the cost of postage from florida to canada no i have not but i ventured a guess to say that it's probably not as much as postage from canada to florida it's possible it's possible that it is but it feels like canadians get ripped off in that regard but maybe not Got some mahogany I could send you and Paul, but I've never shipped Jack. You never shipped anything anywhere? Like you've never sent a parcel or a piece of mail? Are you familiar with the post office? Like the there there's these there are groups of people who will take your thing from you and make it go other places. And then other people can get that thing. <laughs> Just let me walk you through how this works. You give it to them with and some money. You give them the thing and some money. And they take it and give it to somebody else. And keep the money. Letters, sure, but I haven't sent a package out. Yeah, that's not, I mean... Never mailed Christmas gifts or birthday present or anything to anybody. That's that's cool, actually. How old are you that you've gone this far in your life and you've never sent a package? That's that's interesting to me because I don't mail a ton of stuff. I mean, I do, these days I mail more than I used to, but wow, to be the however far you are you're 34 and you've never sent a package that if that feels cool that's it yeah okay you should build multiple packages per week yeah there are weeks where i do multiple packages too but not lately because i don't have anything to sell right now <laughs> Make some stuff to sell. Put it on the Etsy store. Make some sales. Make some money. Be business, Mike. Be better at this. Idiot. My brother-in-law is an over-the-road truck driver. Delivers to Canada sometimes. He's going to be in Quebec next week. It's not very close to me. Nope. That's not going to help. If he goes to Quebec, it's probably going to be... Uh, I would venture to say it might actually be more expensive to send me something from Quebec than from Texas. It's possible. I like these. This is going to be cool. If you got here after I showed what I'm doing, I am doing a version of this piece of art over here. Um, it's like an abstract wooden mountainscape. I'm doing two of them. One of them is for auction for charity for kids programs. One of them is because why not make two when you're making one?
and it, they're, the one that I'm making for auction is going to auction next Saturday. So I needed to get on that. So this past week, I made two panels, primed them. We got one ready to go tonight. We'll slap some paint on it. And uh, then once it's dry, I will cut some wood to make some mountains out of. I am filming the project. It is set to be released, what did I say? May 2026. At the rate that I release videos these days. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that I convince myself to sit in front of my computer long enough this coming week to be able to release a video on Saturday night when this show would normally happen. I could maybe just do a video release. Are those butt joints? No, they're... Well, down here they are. It's a butt joint. It's just... These are just glued onto the... Uh, corners are mitered. The frame is all mitered together. It's art. It's not furniture. It hangs on the wall. It has no stress whatsoever. Purely aesthetic, and that's just fine. Let's slap some paint on this thing. So let's ask Paul. Paul's paying for the show. Paul, you want to slap? Should we slap some paint on this, or should we have another beer, or what should we do? Turning with poop pen? Uh, eventually. Eventually. Bennett's here. I'm late this time because I watched all the dumb ads. No, you certainly did not. You didn't watch 37 minutes worth of ads. Zero chance. There were 37 minutes worth of ads that you watched. No reinforcements. Shame. Shame. Shame on me. For not reinforcing the joints <laughs> on the wall hung piece of art that hangs from a wire on the back of it. <sighs> Probably should have made it on a walnut too. What the hell? Like what, what was I even thinking? Like how dare I? Make this piece of art out of Western Red Cedar. Hey, I think it's I think it's mahogany plywood under there though. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's mahogany plywood underneath that. But this one's MDF. This one's eighth inch MDF. That particular panel. I'm just here for the learning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too, my friend. Olive wood, at least. Well, I mean, at, le at least, if you're going to talk at least, it probably should have been cherry. But at least for me, it should have been walnut, bro. If I make this thing out of nice hardwood instead of Western Red Cedar, this doesn't say $300 on it anymore. Let's put it that way. And considering that this is not sold for $300, I don't think making it out of walnut and charging $600 for it would have made it sold any faster. Would have made it sold? Is that what I actually said? It would have made it sold? That's bad sentencing. Let's go. Let's find a place to put you guys. And I'll show you how I go about this. A bandsaw. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. It's a little far, but I don't really have... 
a closer spot for you. That's probably the best we're going to get. <sighs> Painting. My happy tree's coming soon. We've been over that, okay? My hair is on the wrong side of my head. If my hair was on the other side of my head, then maybe happy little trees. But because it's down here, no. I am gonna start, I'm gonna start by having a look and thinking through where I want my tonal changes and things. I'm gonna move these fucking clamps up on my backside. And uh, let's put this broom over here. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Normally, if I do this kind of thing, so this is, this was the one that I did all right. Uh, I kind of started by figuring out where I wanted the mountain aesthetic to happen. So I would start by kind of doing just a general like this. Uh, because then I don't need to paint all down here. I can just paint up here. But I think for this one, I am going to just do the whole thing. And then I'll figure out where the mountains can go over it based on parts that I do or do not want to cover up down here. So we'll just paint the whole thing. Yeah, if I have enough. And if it's not hard. Ooh, it's a little gloopy. I haven't painted for a long time, my friends. So, some of this paint not, might not even be any good anymore. Oh, purple's good. Yeah. All right. Purple's good. Orange is pretty gloopy. I might might not do orange. It's crimson. Oh, huh. Oh. Okay. Uh, that's not good either. It's not only like I think it's moldy. <laughs> So maybe magenta. This painting is going to be made out of the paint that we have available. Now that's gross too. Okay, so purple, gloopy orange, <laughs> check turquoise. <laughs> this is okay. That looks good. Yeah, turquoise is good. Purple, orange, turquoise. Do I want to use that? Doesn't smell gross, but it's pretty gloopy. Uh, some phthalo green. Yep, that's good too. Okay, maybe purple, orange, turquoise, phthalo. What's wrong with your house that your paint has gone moldy? Acrylic paint turns if it gets water in it. That's just it's a it's a reaction that happens. Maybe some yellow. Maybe a little bit of primary yellow. Oh. Maybe a little bit of lemon yellow. Yep. Okay. So. <laughs> lemon yellow, some orange, some phthalo green, and some uh, turquoise. And some white. I don't really need turquoise if I'm using table green. And some white. Hopefully I have enough white to make this actually happen. Actually, I'm going to work down as far as I have enough white to make this happen. 
And that's probably where my mountains are going to end up going. <laughs> Let's just loop some white on here. Then we'll start with some green. Where do I want? I want. Let's go purple. Purple, green, orange, yellow. Liquidy enough that it will work, but okay. splotch of purple in here a splotch of green in here that and maybe like that it's gorgeous right that is a really attractive piece of art right there <laughs> here's where the fun part happens though Just don't want to track that around all over my shop, so we're gonna get it. Got a two, a one and a half, and a one. So we've been making decisions during like like, Paul, this is not just throwing poop, like, at the zoo, okay? There have been decisions that have been made on purpose. Now we're going to make some more decisions. We're going to try to figure out how we want these things to interact with each other while we go through the process of doing it. So this is kind of, kind of the technique that we're uh, that we're working on here.
and then we'll start bringing some orange into the green and we'll just keep working our way through i do wish i would have had more white i think it might be done with that guy because i don't want to be pulling too much of the purple and green into the orange and green and purple mix so that's done we'll go to our one and a half Oh, that is thick. Damn it, that is too thick. I gotta get that out of there. Crap. Orange isn't gonna work. It's too thick. make our own orange using moldy red and yellow no the moldy red is also too thick Make some adjustments. Stupid orange. Wrecked my whole damn plan. And I don't have any red, so I can't even make any.
Okay, I don't hate that. I don't hate it, but it's, I'm not. I don't like it. It's okay. Just get a few more like little guys. And then it's more texture and It will have it will have visual interest. You're not going to be able to tell me it doesn't have view, visual interest. There is a gradient. It looks worse on the screen than it does in real life. Looking at what's not working. In person, that works. On the screen, it may or may not, but in person, that actually works. Purple and green through to green and teal with some yellow up in here. <laughs> this part won't matter because it's just going to be mountains in the end anyway. Mountains will go somewhere like this. Somewhere in here. Maybe a little higher through here.
something like that. Well, something like that. These will be wood. The mountains will be wood. That'll be my sky. I don't hate it. Considering, like, didn't actually have the paint I wanted to use. <laughs> Okay. It's okay. I mean, it is what it is. Get some of that excess off the edges and the top. Because I'm going to wrap that in wood. So I'm actually going to. Want, I don't want big globs around the edges, so. Get a beer before I sit down. Clamps in the way. Moved them out of my way and I moved them into my way. All right. Go back, see how many people are like, mm, my three-year-old can paint that. <laughs> Martin Herzog, the colors invoke the spirit of a man trampled beneath the weight of an oppressive technological regime of artificial intelligence art. This is that's the motivation. This was during Mike's splotchalist phase when he created some of his most popular works. <laughs> uh, yep. There we go. Uh, the possum? Yeah, you're not friends with the possum anymore? What'd you do? What'd you do, Kyla? Use a putty knife? I was using a putty knife lots. I mean, not during the brush strokes, but most of that was putty knife. Well, not putty knife, like painter's knife. Needs more green. No, it absolutely doesn't. It needed red. And orange. And I should fire whoever stocked my paint before this endeavor. Don't you have some starboard glue you could add to it? There it is. I knew I knew it would come. That almost looks like I could do that. <laughs> Sawdust or planar shavings. I have put sawdust into paintings before when I needed some texture and they became 
the trees on a quadra island that I mixed a bunch of sawdust into. It needs the orange. Yeah, it really did. Okay, all right. Later, Kapla. From however many minutes ago that was. Can we have some unlicensed light jazz in the background, please? When I watch people making art, I was, I'm always inspired by the way they're willing to paint over stuff that was okay. <laughs> Yeah, I, it's it's a process. It's a it's a process. And then it it'll I'll look at it tomorrow after it's dry when the colors have solidified and become what they actually are because paint dries different colors than when you put it on a little bit. And I'll watch how they play together. And uh, maybe it'll be fine. Maybe I need to do it again. Maybe I just go buy a bunch more paint and this stuff is obviously all super old. So <laughs> sub cost, it's basically free because like 2017 Mike paid for this. So it's basically free for 2023 Mike. Billy Goat on them mountains. Nope. Eventually, it'll turn into one of these. This is the type of thing that we are going to end up with. It'll be obviously different sky, but that's the type of thing that we are eventually going to end up with. I'd like to see how it looks if you drag a clean brush horizontally edge to edge all the way down and just blend it all into one muddy gross brown because i don't want to see that i like the visual interest of the the cross hatchy strokes with the greens and the purples right now i don't hate it and not hating it is a good place to be at this point. It's like turning. It's a process. You get you get midway into a thing and you're like, I don't hate that. Let's finish it and see what it turns into. Like, let's finish curving and cutting and shaping and things and then whatever it becomes, it becomes. And if it sucks, like... You, did you enjoy yourself? I I am enjoying myself. I had fun doing that. That's worth something. If it's so bad, if I look at it after it dries and it's so bad that I can't stand to look at it, I have a random orbital sander. I just start again. Take all the texture and everything out of it. I'll just sand it back to prime and go at it again. And go get the paint that I wanted to use in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> no wrong answers in art. <laughs> yeah, that's accurate. No wrong answers. And even if I just left that, however it is, even if I don't care for it, I slap some mountains on it, frame it out, somebody's going to love it. Somebody will stumble upon it at exactly the right moment, and it'll speak to them in a way that I had never intended. And they will need to have it in their lives, and they'll buy it and bring it home. Because that's what it's all about. It's about making something that'll speak to somebody in a way that you didn't even necessarily intend on in the first place. A lot of drug use at your art shows? Maybe. 
I don't know. I'm not testing everybody. <laughs> you know what? If art doesn't speak to you, then that's fine. It's weird, but it's fine. It'll speak to somebody. You never looked at a piece of art and just been like, <gasps> like something, something inside you was like shifted momentarily. Or just like it made you like it, it moved you, your eye around the thing in a way that you just did not expect, or like you just had to linger over it longer than you consciously thought you were. Like, art is, does amazing things. And even if I just finish this exactly how it is, it'll do that to somebody at some point. I would guess right now. I would guess I'm probably at least going back into it with some orange. Uh, it needs a little more dynamic in terms of its color. Like this one, you can see we started out with blues and got into some magentas and purples and then went back up over here into reds and then down into pinks. And like, that's got a nice, a nice progression. And it, the, the strokes are relatively consistent across it, but the way that the, the colors are interacting with each other is a lot more dynamic than what I've just done tonight. But I had a lot more white to work with over there too. And white is a big contributing factor to the way that those brush strokes interrelate to each other. I was not prepared. I was not adequately prepared to be painting. Because I just assumed like, you got buckets, you got a ton of things of paint in the cabinet at home. Should have taken inventory on how many of them were actually usable. It's frustrating for me that I see so many cool things I want to do, but have a queue of so many. To have a queue of so many. Even simple primitive boxes are amazing to you. you can't let yourself be amazed. Let it like there's. This world would be shitty if you didn't allow yourself to just be amazed by things. Keep working towards whatever you want to work towards, but let yourself be amazed at things. Pushing to do more this summer. I'm beyond the point where I'm pushing. I just like, I'll let things come in waves and however they're going to come and don't I'm not going to let myself force it and uh, and then be unhappy that I forced it. You know, I just let it come whenever it comes. It's been, I want to say like no word of a lie. It's probably been three or four years since I painted something. Because it just never felt like it. And this, the, the only reason I'm painting these is because I committed my myself I committed to myself that I would put something in this charity auction. And it's an art charity auction. So I wanted to make an art to put in the. I guess that's really forcing the issue, though, isn't it? It's not really letting it come how it comes, but in a way it is. And if you came prepared, I would be I would have been amazed. I was more prepared than, honestly, I was more prepared than I thought I was going to be because I went into the, the paint cabinet and I was like, oh, damn, I got lots of paint. Sweet. <laughs> nope. 
you don't, even your yellow is pretty much garbage. Um, the green and the purple was basically like... That one's probably still good. This is brand new. Got the foil still on. Should have used that. It's this one. <laughs> Should have done blue base. I mean, honestly, the main problem was the lack of white. And red. Or orange. If I had enough white and a decent orange, I think this would have been this would have worked out a lot better. I still don't think I hate it though. Let's have another look. So these, these are all going to be wood. So basically you just look at it from like there. It looks way more teal on the screen than it does in real life. I don't know. It might, it might actually be okay. I would have very much liked to have some orange in there, though. <sighs> Felt good to be swinging a paintbrush. It's been a long time. Paint on my fingies. I like it. All right. And we did something on the show. And we're only an hour 19 in, so we can hang out. And then I watched the numbers just plummet. Um... And you're like random hypothetical questions. We had fun with hypothetical questions last week. Doing the mountains out of bird's eye maple to offset the blues. No. I'm not giving away bird's eye maple. I'm giving this shit away, yo. Maybe not this one. The other one, probably. Um, no, it'll be cedar. It'll be Mikey B. You know what I'm going to use for the mountains? I'm going to use, remember, what, five years ago? I, I, was at, uh, I was at Windsor, and you were like, hey, you want to buy any of these bundles of tongue and groove cedar that boss just wants the hell out of here? And I was like, sure. I think they were like 10 bucks a bundle. Way up at the top there. Bundles of tongue and groove cedar. That's probably what these are gonna get me to the, the mountains and the and the frame on this guy and the other one that I'm doing are probably gonna be that stuff. Is that the stuff you started making a sword from? No, you started making a sword from it was fence, it was fencing. It was uh, like Home Depot cedar fence board. Oh, the, the, the big like double scale hunting knives that you were gonna make, I think was Douglas fir. I think those are Douglas fir. They're still around someplace too, my friend. <laughs> Uh, 
I want to know how you keep your planes from rusting when they sit out in the open in your garage. Um, well, I don't know. I wipe them down once in a while when they get some dust on them and, um, I, I don't know how they don't rust. They don't, uh, I don't let, I don't let moisture dry, like, I don't let moisture get on them and then evaporate off of them. Like we, we aren't, we're, we're coastal. So you would think it would be super humid, but like our humid is like 70%. And our dry is probably like 50%. Like we don't actually swing that much in humidity, even though it's like, it'll be super rainy and stuff outside. It just doesn't really work that way here. I think I do still have those, Mike. They may have gotten thrown in a fire. But I, I think I'm I either up on the up on the pine and assorted softwoods rack or in the spare room in the in the, the studio in the back of the house. I might still have those like hunting things with the finger. Do you want me to go look? <laughs> go see if I can find them? I have mine in silicone impregnated sleeves from Woodcraft and they still get surface rust in the summer? Really? But what are your humidity swings though? Do you know like percentages? Because we, I mean, we are fairly moist. I know that's a word that a lot of people really like. We are fairly moist here, but we don't have wild swings. So like condensation doesn't attach and then evaporate. And that's what causes rust. I did notice on my Veritas LAJ, like a little spot a little while ago. It's not the kind of thing I'm ever going to worry about, though. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. So much. So much terrible. I... Is it, I mean... Am I happy that I have little spots of surface rust on my plane? No. Am I concerned and going to do something to remedy about it? No. <laughs> Am I concerned that it's going to spread? No. I really, I kind of want to go find the, those knives that Mike started to make in my shop all those years ago. I'm going to start by looking up here, but if they're not up there, I'm going to go into the house and look because those, they were cool. Come on up with me. I know there's at least the start of a couple of swords up there. Somebody dial 9-1. It's the start of like an elven -y thing that I was working on a long time ago. 
I think that's I think that's one of the ones that I was doing when you were working on yours. Oh, Mikey. One of those little guys. I think I see it, my friend. I don't know that I can get to it with the things in the orientations that they're at right now. Mikey B. <laughs> like a little serrated back edge. You've got things are even be like beveled like we got a fair ways along on this thing my friend and we didn't get as far along on the second one but this one even got like a little bit of shaping in here and stuff you should finish these off these are cool and i got to start on some like not replica, but like elven-ish style. Type little dealies. That was that was a fun day. I remember that day. Uh, just having fun with the bandsaw. And some table saw. A little bit of table saw. And the drill and some, yeah. I have a lot more tools than I had when we started making those too. So we might actually like those would have been pretty handy to have an oscillating belt sander would have been a good tool that day. <laughs> I didn't finish. No, I did. Here. Elven sword. Yeah, that, I was. I like of all the of all the weaponry at uh, in Lord of the Rings. I think I gravitate towards the elven curves and things. And so this was sort of just like a rough, like I just kind of sketched it onto the board and was like, maybe, maybe come up through here with the the hilt. What is now that's the cross what's it called on a sword keep the part that keeps your hand from getting dinged when the another sword comes down it's like we'll do a little sort of curvy design in through here and then something in through here and then i'll start carving away and it's sort of elven little little dritz little dritz um he used a pair of scimitars though and I would not, this would not be considered a scimitar. I would call that probably a, an elven bastard sword. It's like a hand and a half. Driz wielded scimitars. Um, but I know what you mean. Loves, love Legacy and Star Wars Um, yeah, I re I've read a fair number of Drew's Durden Durden books. In my head, it sounds better than when you start to try and say it out loud. <laughs> it's like try to pronounce that guy's name out loud. You're like Drew's Durden, but in your head, it sounds great because you just read it and you don't actually have to pronounce it. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. 
I'll finish those one day. I think I made a pair. I think these actually came from the thinning because I th was thinning down this and I ended up with pieces like quarter inch thick. And I was like, I got extra pieces now. Oh yeah, it absolutely did. And I was like, I got extra pieces. I can make little like sort of mini, like off the back, like, like Legolas knives kind of things. I think I have two of those. And I just kind of like scabbed on some extra little bits that I was then gonna shape. I should finish these. <laughs> Where's Sting? They're they're not replicas. Like they're not based on any particular knife. Actually, Mike's were based on a particular knife. He actually had a picture to work from and shit. I was just like, I'm a freehand draw some curvy elvish type weaponry. It was a fun day. It was just hanging out in the shop with a couple of buddies and chucking some wood into some saws and sanders and stuff. I think a diagram for Sting is available. A diagram for lots of swords are available. You just take a screenshot. <laughs> No, I, I would love to do a replica. I think if I was going to uh, replicate a sword from those films to do like a wooden version of it, it would probably be Hatafang. Because um, that is a gorgeous piece of weaponry. Um Yeah, I think that's probably my favorite sword in the the trilogy, the way that it was adapted and the, the look that they went for. Sorry, I had a fang. I just realized who I'm talking to. Um, had a fang is the name of Arwen's sword. Monday, maybe? Uh, maybe. Maybe. I do. I have to get these arts done. So, yeah, yeah, maybe you can come hang out in the shop and maybe, like, if you're okay with just, like, once in a while, I have to just stop to do a shoot a take of a thing. Um, yeah. Monday sounds good for a hang. You can do cleaning again. <laughs> I've dreamt of making a Drake Talon Cleaver from World of Warcraft. It's a wicked wall hang. Okay. I really would like to make a, a Breath of the Wild Master Sword and Mass and Hylian Shield. And the shield can hang on the wall and the sword can hang. The Master Sword can like slide into it or something as a wall hanger. But they would be two separate things, so you could like take it. It wouldn't just be like a carved art piece. It would be like the Hylian shield and the master sword. And then when you hung it on the wall, like it would slide in behind kind of a deal. I'd really like to make something like that. But I could also very easily see myself doing something out of Lord of the Rings with like the Rohirrim equipment um, with a shield and then swords crossed wall mounted I think on Dorian shield with a big ass two-handed longsword bad boy I mean, it'd be great to have like a wall of like all of the races of Middle Earth's weaponry 
right? How sick would that be? Like swords and shields mounted of like the Rohirrim and Gond the people of Gondor and the Elven the, the Lothlorien elves and the Rivendell elves and the Shire folk would just be like a pitchfork. Uh and you know, oh that'd be sick. Uh, Mike, I'll think about Monday. I have some other adulting that I have to do. I, was I think I talked about it last week on the show about how, like, this week I need to do some adulting. And I only did about half <laughs> of the adulting I needed to do this week. But, yeah, let's go with, let's go hesitant, hesitant, yes, not hesitant. Uh Yes, unless I decide otherwise tomorrow. There's a guy on YouTube that makes sells Lord of the Rings daggers and has a sick workshop tour in a theater room with all the deluxe swords. Oh, sick. sick. I would like to make them out of wood just to, for it to be unique. Like, I would like to have these replica swords and shields made out of walnut and cherry instead of like either actual metal or like foam. Like a lot of people do replica weaponry with like floor mats and stuff like that for like cosplay. And those look awesome. They're cool. But I would want to just have it wood grain and not painted silver and faux like weathering and stuff just like like purely tributes to these weapons as opposed to replicas of these weapons see now I'm talking to myself in my head a series of videos where Mike Wake makes Lord of the Rings weapons out of walnut and cherry. <laughs> That's something that I could get behind. That is something I could very, very much get behind. Too many things in the in the lineup right now. There, but I could, I could see I could see that being a rad, really fun thing to do. Especially if I could figure out like this is where I'm going to display them. I need. That's really my the, the only reason that I might not do that is because where am I going to put them? But like if I can convince wife that this big wall on the living room of the living room should probably be swords and shields from Lord of the Rings <laughs> or mm, I got a big wall be really hard to hang and I'd never have access to them after I got them up there but I've got a wall on the other side of the stairs Like a, it's, the staircase goes down and then I have a railing across here and then a, the, the opposite wall from the living room where the stairs go down. Like I'd never be able to get back up there to get them again, but I could get up there once to hang them up there. The wall above the stairwell. Yeah, my, see, Mike knows my house. That's, I, I was like, I mean, can she even say no? Because once I get them up there, she's not going to go get them down. Need another man cave? I already have one. 
No, it's a lie. I already have kind of three. Kind of three. But one, she's taken over as a sewing room. But it still has, like, all of my stuff on the wall. Like, all my action figures and geeky stuff is on one wall. But she's kind of taken over it as a sewing room. And one is the office. Um, which is all but storage at this point. And then one is the studio. Which is all but storage at this point. And the fridge and the deep freeze. And... would be rad though I bet I would get I would bet I would get a pretty good number of views on like making Lord of the Rings weapons out of walnut and cherry the yeah, office yeah it's like it's just some bookshelves and a desk with my computer on it and then just a bunch of shit Weird nerd brag. <laughs> hey, I like that. I I can appreciate. I already appreciate this nerd brag. I have a framed poster from the Kendaru Mura Memorial Edition. It's the spread of guts riding on Zod's back. That's even nerdier than I even know what you're talking about. But I love it. 28 by 38 big ass thing that you're happy with. I I don't even care what it is. That sounds great. Like Zod from Superman? Because I don't know. <laughs> General Zod, right? But I don't know what the rest of a lot of the rest of those words mean. But I like you the I like that you're passionate about the awesome nerdy thing that you've got. I don't have any like awesome nerdy daily things. I have the King's brother riding his war pig as my screensaver. I have uh, some Zelda. I have Zelda lock screen and and wallpaper on my phone. It used to be Gandalf, but I really really like Breath of the Wild. It was really really good video game. Um, I do, uh, I do have a collection of football guys and Lord of the Rings guys, but I don't have anything like, well, my giant Legolas is pretty rad. My giant Thor is pretty rad too, though. And that's not giant. Neither of them are really that big. They're like, oh, well, what's my Legolas? Probably like 20 inches. He's pretty cool. Thor is about the same. Um, I didn't realize so many of you guys were like super geeky. Like we could have special guests. I could bring out my geeky special guest each week. And I'd be like, here's my, my geeky special guest this week. Gladiator Hulk, you know, <laughs> or whatever. Unfortunately, Mike, the football guy collection is now in totes. Boo. Boo. It was a pretty, it was a pretty geeky collection, but I liked it. It's like maybe a hundred McFarland football guys. <laughs> a lot it's in totes in the studio and they need to go in the attic I need to seal it up so that critters don't get in it 
and then just put it up in the attic. Boo totes, put them on the wall above the stairwell. Oh, that would be something that wife would just... I might get away with, like, handcrafted movie prop replicas out of fancy woods. I'm absolutely not going to get away with clamshell plastic McFarlane football guys. <laughs> Real football or soccer? I don't think McFarlane makes soccer guys, does he? Yeah, there's a it's American football. McFarlane NFL and NCAA collections of football action figures in their original packaging. About a hundred of them. <laughs> Give or take. I did, at one point, I did have them sort of wallpapering, like offset, it's sort of a brick pattern of them, wallpapering a whole wall in my den. I, I would venture to say, well, it was about, it was about six, six high by 15 to 20 rows wide, wallpapering. So yeah, probably about a hundred McFarland guys in packaging. Boo totes. Coming up on two hours here in a, in a few minutes, so maybe we'll get wrapping it up. I don't really have anything else to be talking about. I am really digging the idea of making Lord of the Rings replica weaponry out of walnut and cherry. <laughs> God, this is what this show does to me. It gives all it gives me all these like just they just come up these awesome ideas and it's like, oh, I should make a fucking cello. <laughs> it's like, oh making weaponry and, and shields from Lord of the Rings out of walnut. That'd be really good. That's I would never do it. Like, well, no, I, I can't say that. Like, it's just like, it's just another thing to add to the list of hopes and dreams. To have crushed. <laughs> I'll start a GoFundMe. For people to support my hopes and dreams of making replica weaponry from cherry and walnut. Then I'd have to do it if people paid me. But maybe that would be the kick in the ass I would need to actually like... Fuck it. Let's go. Let's spend all of 2024... If only, if only you had a woodworking shop full of tools. It's not the tooling that's the problem. It's the time, my friend. I would never, I would never complain that I can't make them because I don't have the equipment. I can't make them because it's like, I just have so many other things that I need to make. Or want to make, or they got in front of them in the lineup or whatever. And if none of it's actually going to make me any money, then I have to go with priority list of like what's actually the most important. It's probably going to end up being stuff I've already started so that it can get the hell out of my way. Or like furniture for the house that is necessary. Like wife wants like a sort of pantry. Well, let's just call it a standalone pantry type piece of furniture for the laundry room and some shelves for over the laundry equipment. Um, 
so she wants some shelves for the living room. I need some new benches for the backyard around the fire pit or seating of some kind. Mm, yeah. And that's, that's the type of stuff that's going to get made if I'm not getting paid to make anything else. <laughs> I did spend all the money on the dust collector. It kind of hurts, but lungs. The Jet, two horsepower dealer. The, with the 10% off sale. I think you're, you're not going to be mad at yourself in a few months. Even if, you, like, you might not be mad at yourself now, but, like, I have never regretted spending a lot of money on a tool after a while. Once the bank account recovered, I would, I like, I was, I, I've never been, like, damn, I wish I didn't spend $1,400 on this bandsaw. Wife wants me to rebuild the walk-in closet. Get on it. The air filter cleaning deal. See, ceiling deal? Glad I can wire a 240 outlet myself. You can come by and wire me a 240 as well if you want. Because I would like to get a 240 dust collector and pipe it to everything. No, I kind of don't. It takes up too much room. I'm, I, I'm split. I go back and forth. Like, big-ass dust collector that's piped to everything. Or two more little mini ones and just have everything connected to, like, everything that needs to be collected has a blast gate to one of the three little guys. It's, it's about shop, making the best use of the space. And neither answer is good. But. It's just poorly arranged. You have everything you need for it. Your face is poorly arranged. I think this shop is almost optimized. With the amount of stuff that I have. If you can think of a better way. To organize. A hybrid table saw. A jointer, a planer, an oscillating belt sander, a drill, a drill press, a 14-inch bandsaw, and a, a lathe, a grinder, and wood storage, and a shop fridge in a one-car garage, and a workbench, a, a stout and dual operating workbench in a one-car garage. Let's hear it. We'll talk. But I don't see it. I can do it, but you won't like it. Well, then it's not. Then it's not good. If I don't like it, it's not good. Because this is my shop. So it has to actually, I have to actually like it. Have I seen your itty bitty workshop? Yes, but you don't have a hybrid table saw, and a lathe, and a 14-inch bandsaw, and a jointer, and an oscillating belt sander, and a planer, and a drill press, <laughs> and a shop fridge, and a grinder, and wood storage. Which is the requirement for organizing my shop. Yes, I do, he says. Really? It's interesting, because I've never seen your hybrid table saw. Or your lathe. Or your 14-inch bandsaw. Or your jointer. Or your planer. <laughs> or your dust collector. Or your oscillating belt sander. I keep it all at your house. Then it's not yours, is it? Here. One more, and then we'll call it. I think for tonight.
You don't get to just claim that your stuff, that my stuff is yours because you have access to it. <laughs> just because you can come use it doesn't mean it's yours. Okay? Okay? Uh, it's probably the videos that make the shop layout difficult. No. Uh... Honestly, it's it's in feed out feed because the my workbench is my out feed cable for my table saw, and I need to have I don't even have a full eight of in feed on my table saw. Uh, jointer needs to be over here so that I have enough in feed, and the out feed has I have to have the garage door open. The planer at this point. It has to come out from underneath the workbench on top of the workbench so that I can in feed out feed and sometimes the garage door has to be open. Uh, it, the, the bandsaw needs to have at least a certain amount of space around it to be able to operate and even now I have to like swivel it out if I do anything more than three or four feet long. So now even Anything more than about two feet long, I have to pivot it so that it's now going along the width, the length of the shop instead of towards the wall. So, yeah. Put the bench against the wall, all tools on wheels. No, I'm not putting my bench against the wall. I like being able to go around to both sides of my bench and work at things from either side of them without turning the thing around. I like to be able to go around to either side of my bench and work at things from either way. And it has to, it also has to serve as my outfeed table for my table saw. And if it was against the wall, it couldn't do that. I honestly, like, I think with the tooling I have and the space that I have, I think I'm almost optimized. I just have too much stuff. I have too much stuff for a one-car garage. I, and one of the, no, it isn't real. I was going to say one of the problems is that I also has to store wood, but the wood isn't in the way. The wood is up on the wall, though. Like, the wood is essentially stored in unusable space otherwise. I like that. Matt, I like that a lot. The workshop is eternally almost optimized. <laughs> yes, it is, my friend. We are always just a couple steps away from being perfectly optimized in the shop. I thought the bench in the center was for videos. No, the bench in the, well, it's not in the center. It's very much off to one side, but the bench away from the wall is for it to also be my outfeed table for my table saw. That's the main reason because my table saw can't get any closer to the wall so okay that's got shit all over the place from painting um table saw has to outfeed somewhere and it can't get any closer to the wall so outfeed table has to be at least what's that two and a half three feet off the wall which is the main reason for its location. But I also do really like being able to go around to each side of it. Clamp stuff to both sides of it.
honestly, I think even if I had a two car garage and could spread out, I think I would still want to be able to like, even if, if my bench was not the outfeed table for the table saw, I would still want to have access to all sides of it. As it is, I only have access to three. I would love to have my bench be accessible from all directions. If different kinds of clamping in different sections, it'd be great. I used to have my bench in the center as well, but I ran into the same issue. Spatial requirements. I've read a dozen books and many think having access to all sides is a big deal. It's all dependent on your shop. It absolutely is. You know, I mean, we all make the best of whatever situation we're in. Um, the fact that it serves as my outfeed table for my table saw is basically the deal breaker for whether or not it can be against the wall. More fun talks tonight, guys. Appreciate it. As always, I appreciate you guys coming by. Uh, we painted a thing. Which may or may not get painted over tomorrow. <laughs> After I go get some new paint. Yeah, I thought I had lots. I looked in the, in the, the art paint cabinet. I was like, shit, I got tons of these. Right on. Good work, past Mike. I'll go get some new stuff. Maybe we'll do what maybe we'll do art on the show more often. I enjoyed that. I reorganize a mess while watching progress. Lathe tools are spread out. On the living room floor, but that's fine. <laughs> yes, it is. Let's let's wrap it up. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe, everybody. Thank you once again for coming by. I very much appreciate you all. Next week is a week off or a Monday show. Probably a week off. You know what? I'm just going to commit. I'm going to commit and say I am taking a week off. From the show next week i've done 20 i think i've done 21 shows in 16 weeks this year i'm taking next week off so we'll see you in may uh approximately i don't know the seventh ish of may hey hold on let me check Let me check uh, when the next show is going to be. Let me check my calendar. Oh, that's April. May. Next show will be May 6th. which is only, what, five days before it's only four days before leave injury day May 10th Lathe Injury Day. Bye for now, everybody. Thanks for watching. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe. If I haven't said that yet, and even if I had, I'll say it again. Bye for now.